obviously, we just about scraped through with a 1-0 win. And that is only thanks to a Georgia Stanway penalty. And that is only thanks to the fact that we had a chance to retake that penalty because the Haiti keeper came off her line too early. That's how close it was. That's the difference between us not getting those additional two points. Um, Rach, what were your thoughts? Because that was not the game that we were expecting. No, um, it's pretty underwhelming. Um, I was a little surprised at the lineup. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think maybe England underestimated Haiti, and I think they probably wanted, say, Russo to get her shooting boots on. Um, they probably thought they could get some players, maybe a little bit of match fitness in this game. Um, and it was interesting to see from the lineup who was going to be partnering Millie Bright as well. Was it going to be Greenwood? Was it going to be Carter? It was Carter. Um, Underwhelming. Uh, I think England were quite slow in the first half. I think the biggest issue was was that they underestimated Haiti. I think they thought Haiti were going to sit back, park the bus, 11 players behind the ball, and that's not really what they did. Um, and I think England didn't adapt to the fact that Haiti were were doing well pressing them, were countering really well, and it meant they were leaving loads of space down. The, the fullbacks were getting too far forward, leaving loads of space. My God, are Haiti good at the counter-attack. I thought Haiti were disciplined, their movement was really good. I was I was kind of watching, you know, I was behind their defence in the second half. Even like right down to the 90th minute, they're stepping across together. They're really well concentrated. Very clever with when they move with their press. Didn't give England a huge amount of time in the midfield. Really fit, like kept up with them through the game. Um, so I think while England underwhelmed me, I was really impressed with Haiti. And I actually thought they deserved a goal. Um uh, yeah, it was just, there was standout, uh, Mel Chidumone, who we'd spoken about before, um, Teos, I think it was, in goal. She was, they were both superb. I couldn't decide who should have got player of the match between the two of them. Um, and of course, FIFA being FIFA, gave it to Georgia Stanway. Um, but yeah, I just thought, <laughs> Haiti can go away, heads held high, um, and there could be some surprises in this group. I think um, it was a very exciting game, especially in that first half, because Haiti, like you said, really took the game to England. Um, and there were so many chances, especially in that first half, that I thought, you know what? I think Haiti might actually get the first goal. Um, a couple of chances, like you said, that were coming from uh, the back line, pressing way too far up and being exposed at the back. I mean, Millie Bright, we've got to talk about her. Um, she didn't have the best game today. Um, and obviously being captain we were kind of expecting that she was going to have to really step into that position after obviously a long time of not playing in competitive football. But, you know, she'd been declared fit. She'd been declared safe to play. So we thought that that was maybe going to be... She she needed to step into that role a lot more. And what we actually saw, I think, was something quite shaky. Uh, I mean, her first um, pass back, uh, over to, to Lucy Bonds on the, on the right-hand side, I mean, it was cut short. It was a, a very weak pass. Haiti intercepted it and all of a sudden it looked like we were on the back foot and there was a couple of occasions like you said where Millie Bright had gone so far up that it only took a one pass to cut through her and all of a sudden it was 2v2 or one-on-one -on -one with, with Mary Earps and um, yeah that was the biggest concern for me actually I mean we always knew that we were going to be a bit shaky in defence but I didn't realise that the shakiness was going to come from our most experienced defender I mean do you think that she should have started given that game? Um, I don't think Serena would have started her if she didn't think she was ready but she didn't look match fit. She didn't look sharp enough. Um, and I feel like, but that I feel like that was the England team all over a little bit, uh, which is a little bit frustrating, I guess, because you know they've had the Portugal game, they played Canada behind closed doors. Um, maybe that's not quite enough. Maybe we should have had another uh, send off game, but then we had the whole issue with the ECA and when players can be released. Um, but that's what it felt like. It just didn't feel. It was a bit like the Portugal game. They just didn't seem sharp. Um, first half was really slow as well, I thought. Uh, actually, me and the camera guy beside me were both a bit like, this is almost boring. Like, bloody hell, move the ball quicker. It's what we're used to seeing. Um, so the ex most of the excitement came from when uh, Haiti came forward. Um, so it, The crowd yeah, really just, got behind them when they went forward. Really yeah, got behind them. There were so it many was so cheers. It, yeah, it was wild. I was like, I looking in the crowd and seeing so many Lionesses shirts and every time Haiti went forward, there was the biggest cheer. It was bigger than the Lionesses' chances. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it was an interesting one. Um, I don't think that's the 11 that's going to start against Denmark or China. I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the Euros where we have the same starting 11 every time. Um, you can't look at that starting 11 and say yeah, that's our best 11. We should be starting the next game. A team like Denmark or China, I mean, Haiti exposed us. So Denmark or China will do the same and are probably probably have maybe more clinical finishers. Um, 
But equally, as much, like it was a combination of England didn't play well and Haiti played great. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to give too much, take too much away from Haiti's performance either. I think that's a quite an interesting take because I was kind of debating this with the, a couple of the writers that I was working with this evening because they were saying, okay, well, you know, this is the start. I wasn't expecting that Russo was going to start. Um, I really thought I had my heart and soul invested. I would have put my my entire mortgage on the fact that that that, uh, that Daly was going to start over Russo. So when the team sheet came up, there was a, a ripple amongst the uh, the media centre going, whoa, did not did not see this happening. Um, but I just kind of felt that. Is this going to be a situation where actually Serena was kind of using this first game, this Haiti game, to kind of test out a certain set of players? Um, and that the second game, the Denmark game, the China games, were going to be the kind of, I don't know, we're going to see more squad rotation than, than we're used to, perhaps because obviously the squad has travelled out so far um, that, you know, some of the players are maybe more expectant about that and also to build better squad cohesion. I mean, it's a long way to go out for you know, four or five weeks for someone like Katie Zellum to sit on the bench and not see any minutes or for, you know, Laura Coombs to, you know, never have a a minute at the tournament. So do you think maybe there's going to be more rotation? It's not just going to be, oh, well, Daly will start. We'll actually start to see sort of, you know, some of the players that we don't see so often making the starting lineup or at least coming on as, as substitutes if things are going the right way. Potentially. I think, you know, you look back at the Euros and, and England didn't play great against Austria either um, and it looked nervy. But I still felt like they were more match prepared, match fit than they are. They look now, and part of me it was sharper for sure. Were, yeah, part of me thinks that there was an element of using this match, which they thought would be the easier match of the. I mean, we all thought it would be the easier match, mm-hmm. um, to give players minutes and get them some match prep, match game time. Get sorry, game time. Um, and I'm just not sure. We've talked about this, I think, in the past. It didn't go the way they planned, I don't think. And I just don't think their reactions were quick enough or they reacted quick enough to what was going on on the pitch and Haiti's game plan. Um, so that was interesting. And and again, yeah, I just don't think that that's the starting 11. For me, I just don't think Toon made that impact in the number 10. I think she really struggled to find Russo. We talk a lot about them as a pairing. I think there was a struggle there today. You know, someone like a Lauren James, I thought she'd bring on Lauren James into that role um, and have, have Kelly and Hemp on the wings. Um, what did you think about Lauren happen? James coming on um, at the time that she did for Lauren Hemp? Because I thought Hemp was actually having one... Of, I, th- I thought she was one of the stronger, stronger players on the squad at the time. Um, I thought she was having a pretty good game, sort of causing carnage on, on the wing and, and, you know, putting in some, some Lauren Hemp-esque deliveries. So I just thought that was, that was a bit of a weird, a weird sub to make. I think uh, Lauren Hemp was getting very frustrated and we saw that with the tackle she made um, and got booked for. Um, and perhaps there was something to it there where they thought, she's getting too frustrated, we need to switch things up. I think Lauren James is a game changer and there was she was always going to come on. Um, she's the kind of, I mean, I'm surprised she didn't start. But again, that could have been down to identifying this match as a match to give players minutes. Um, but when I was wa- watching the game, I would have thought she would have come on for Elatoon rather than... Um, Lauren Hemp I think she has more end product when she plays in the middle because she can drive forward and pick out those passes and I think sometimes you know we weren't really seeing anything coming from the crosses so bringing on Lauren James just brought someone else on to deliver crosses do you know what I mean it wasn't really offering mm-hmm. something new um, and then I just think England got more and more frustrated I think you've definitely hit the nail on the head because I do feel like it wasn't the deliveries that were the issue. It was the finishing. It was the clinicalness in front of goal. I think, you know, England were racking up chances. And yeah, I mean, there was a couple of really, really good saves from uh, from the Haiti goalkeeper. But also at the same time, there were so many chances that were just directly at her. Just absolute sitters that were just were just very simple parries or very simple pickups or, you know, straight out that she could collect into her body. And I was thinking, that is just not good enough. Like... This is against Haiti. If you're not taking these chances against Haiti, how how are you going to fare against a harder side like Denmark? How are you going to fare against an even harder side like Australia or Germany? It's um it that that was the thing that worried me. And now we're looking at a situation where England gone four games without scoring a goal in open play. I mean the the only reason that we came away from that 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 game with a win was because of a a very I mean it was a bad penalty I mean as as um, obvious penalties go I mean when they went over to the VAR because I think initially a lot of people had missed it 
But um, yeah, I mean, she kind of almost collected the ball with both hands. I think she thought she might have been a goal for a second. Um, and even Bronze in the uh, in the um, the mix zone afterwards was like, oh, I didn't even see that that had happened. I looked back on the replay and I, I was kind of shocked at how obvious it was. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, the ref kind of, I think that was her second or third time over by the monitor at that point. She was having a field day with the VAR. Um, but it was so obvious. And then obviously Georgia Stanway took the penalty not a particularly great first penalty, very much at the sort of goalkeeper, a good height for the goalkeeper, sort of around mid-height section. And then, I mean, it was still a fantastic save, absolutely phenomenal yeah. save. The Haiti fans went absolutely mental. The players clapping on the back, you know, outstanding, absolutely outstanding. And then literally 30 seconds later, she was called back. She had obviously committed a, a foul by uh, getting off her line too early once the uh, the penalty was taken. And it was... um she just looked so broken hearted that like she looked like the save for the team and then went to obviously she she went the wrong way uh, and Stanway slotted into the, the bottom left corner, which you got to give credit to Stanway. That can't have been an easy thing to do. But yeah, it just um, if it, yeah, if it wasn't for that, we now wouldn't be in the position that we're in. Um, because for me, Russo, despite having quite a physically aggressive game, despite getting in the right positions, wasn't converting chances. So do you think Daly yeah. should have started? Yeah, I do. And I think purely because when you're scoring a goal a game or an average of a goal a game in the WSL, your touch is there and your sharpness is there. Um, and I get wanting to give Russo minutes to get her match sharpness up. And again, it's just that I think, from my point of view, that underestimating. Um, and it just became a bit like target practice rather than actually going either side of the goalkeeper. And I feel like Daly would be better at doing that and then by the time Daly did come on the goalkeeper was so warmed up that she was stopping everything um, and it just felt like they were never going to get fire then um, but yeah I think had England scored their first goal in open play I think they would have scored more um, and I think the fact that it was from a penalty a retaken penalty so lucky um, just added to the fact that we still haven't scored a bloody goal from open play kind of attitude um, do you think so, it's yeah. now a bit of a curse? Do you think that's going to be sitting over the players that they've not done this and now it becomes a thing of how many minutes are we going to go before we see a goal in open play? I think it depends on the players you're putting in there. I, I feel there was also an element of, you know, some nerves from players who've not started a major tournament before. Um, and it's about who's in there in those moments. You know, people used to question starting Alan White. And she was there. She had the experience in major tournaments. She knew what to do to start games. She got things going she peppered goalkeepers. She, you know, she, for the team, she figured things out with the defense for them. So by the time a sub came on or Alessio Russo came on, there was a bit more of an understanding of what was going on within the game. And I think there was an element of that, you know. So I think it all depends on who's up front to to try and break that that kind of curse now, if you like. And it's got to be someone with experience in major tournaments. The only difference is, yes, Daly has experience in major tournaments, but it's at the other end of the bloody pitch. Um, so yeah, who, the, whichever one is going to do that and break it, maybe it's going to be Georgia Stanway with an absolute worldie, um, you know, or maybe it's going to come from someone like Lauren Hemp. I don't know, but um, it needs to be someone who's who's more composed and won't let things like that get from them. A Lucy Bronze with a header, you know, that kind of that kind of player. So um, probably not ideal that they have to go in and do it against Denmark. I think. Um... There's a kind of big question around, you know, Russo not having the best game of her life. I don't think she had a bad game. She just obviously didn't do what she was on the pitch to do, which is score. Um, but she was there. She was creating chances. She was getting in the right spaces. She was being aggressive. She was being physical. And you now I've got to give credit to actually some of the subtleties of her play. When she did lose the ball, she committed fouls. And I think the the whole purpose behind that committing fouls, because it was a quite a transitional game. Haiti were very quick and very direct once they got the ball. And I think... Committing those fouls gave the, ch the team a chance to kind of get back into position, set themselves um, and not risk those kind of cheeky little through balls that kept happening throughout the game and putting us in one-on-one -on -one situations and 2v2s. So I will give credit to Russo. It, there was a little bit of a defensive action in, in what she was doing. But I think for Serena, I think it could be quite a, a big question about if you've got a striker who hasn't had the best game, do you continue with her and give her a chance to you know, to show what she's worth again? Or do you say, well, that was your chance. You didn't do what we asked of you and therefore it's Daly's time to shine. What's more important though? Scoring goals and winning the game or giving a player a chance to not feel bad? But because it's the, the same thing about sort of keepers in a way. Like, you know, if a keeper has an absolute nightmare, the, the first thing you do is not say, okay, well, for the next game, you're not going to start. You had an absolute shitter. 
it was shocking, you had your chance, you fucked up, you're gone. It's that kind of vibe. Do you know what I mean? I feel like you need to build confidence. But is Russo England's starting number nine? Anyway, it, it, it is, you know, we've had this, it isn't kind of like having a, a number one goalkeeper having a shit game and taking them out. Russo and Daly have been back and forth and back and forth. So it's kind of a hard one because there's not like an out and out number nine who's missed a load of chances and gets pulled. That's shit. You've got this kind of back and forth. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there should have been a set number nine for a longer period to mm-hmm. allow that kind of confidence to grow. You know, who knows? I, we don't normally question Serena, but um, maybe in this ist- instance, we are. I just think, um, and it would have been different, I think, had Rachel Daly come on and then scored a goal or like been more effective herself uh, and set out her own stand for saying, okay, well, like, Alessia Russo didn't do a job in the first half, but here I am and I've just bedded two. But she didn't. So you've got two strikers there who have had, you know, quite a lot of game time between them. I think Rachel Daly had 25 or so odd minutes um, and both of them were not finding the back of the net. So Serena's got a big, big question on her hand for that Denmark game. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, Yeah, I mean, do you want to put another schooner on it? Because I owe you one now. No, you do. Okay, you just want to keep the one that you've got. All right, amazing. Yeah. 